All right, let's do a killer, killer stone fly. This is the purple stone. So a while back, maybe, I don't know, nearly a year ago, we did a stone fly with this same type of hook, same bead, our same tricky stone fly chenille from Fly Fish Food. Um, this is a black and purple variation. Now you might be thinking there are no stone flies that are purple. You're correct. There are also no dry flies that are purple, but dry flies that are purple catch fish, as does the crazy purple stone. So we're going to do a stone fly in purple, and I think if you try it, especially anywhere there are dark stones, you'll, you'll find some success with this fly. So to start, I've got a uh, Daiichi 1730 in a size 12. You could all do, also do this in 10s or even as big as 8s or 6s. Uh, you'll notice that this hook has a slight kink to it, uh, kind of a stone fly style hook. That's on purpose. It helps flip the hook over. So uh, the way that we're going to fish it, or the way that I'm going to tie it here, is, is weighted, so it's kind of uh, designed for European-style nymphing. You could also use it on an indicator rig, though. And so to make it weighted, I've got a black tungsten bead on there. It's a plummeting tungsten in 532nd, jet black. And then I'm going to use some purple UTC 140 thread. So I've got the bead on the hook. I'm going to start the thread right at the eye and use as few wraps as possible to start the thread. Then we're going to add some antenna, which are these barred purple and black sexy floss in purple, size small. If you're making these in size oh, eight and six, you might get the medium size instead of the small legs. Then we're just gonna connect a couple of these, link up a couple of these uh, legs and tie them out front here, try and make some antenna. If you capture them with the thread, you can manipulate them a little bit make them as straight as you'd like. I usually don't spend too much time making them perfectly straight because the fish really don't mind. Latch them down with some tension to really hold them in place and then I'm just going to whip finish. Get rid of the thread and then make sure I can slide my bead up over the top. If you have a little bit of trouble there, if you do too many wraps right here, the bead won't go back over the top. Then you might try a thinner thread, at least for that step. Um, usually you can get it done. You can see this one goes over the top real easy. Okay, so now I'm just going to take these and trim them up so they're a little bit shorter and try and even them a touch. That's a little better length. You can see they're kind of split. Next up, I'm going to add some weight. You could tie these unweighted, but I'm going to use some lead wire and 020. Uh, just make it a little bit more dense. Again, I'm going to use it on a European rig most of the time, so the weight is really paramount for the way I like to fish. So I'm going to wrap quite a bit of lead on here, wiggle it back and forth to get rid of it, and then I'm going to leave this back end attached until I push it up into the bead. Once I've got it up into the bead, then I can just kind of push this one off with my fingernail, and off it goes. Okay, make sure it's really pushed up in there tight. Now you can see that's pretty clean. I'm going to start the thread now right behind the lead wire. And with tension, I've got quite a bit of tension. I'm pulling with my left hand, and the bobbin has quite a bit of tension in my right hand. And I'm going to build kind of a ramp of thread until I get up over the top of that first wrap of lead. And now I've got basically a blocker back in here that's not allowing the lead to slide back down the shank. Now I can go back up through and wrap thread through the, the lead wire to really hold it in place. Now I'll get rid of this tag end. We'll go back down to the bottom, down to the bend of the hook, and we'll tie in the tail. The tail is the same sexy floss, barred sexy floss in purple. Size small again. Get these two together. I'm going to tie them in at once and try and keep them as straight as possible. Get rid of the excess. And then, I, if they're not really straight, you can try and manipulate them with the thread. I've got them to where they're straight enough for my liking. They could be, this guy for instance could go that way a little bit more, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now we've got that in place. Now I'm going to add that crazy stonefly chenille. This is not your average variegated chenille. It's really, really fine. Uh, it's size zero, super, super small chenille. So you might be able to find variegated chenilles in most shops that are size two, size medium, let's call it. Um, this is not that same product. This is really, really thin, very small. This makes a really sleek stone fly. So I'm gonna pull some of the chenille, some of the rayon away and just exp ex uh, expose the core here. 
and then I'll capture it with the thread, tie it back to where my legs or my tail starts, and then I'm going to work my thread up to about the three quarter point of the hook. Next, I'm just going to use the rotary function of this master vise and rotate the chenille through. As you look at this, you can see it's got a barring of black and purple. It ends up looking really dark, almost black, but if you look really close, you'll see both the black and purple mixed in there. All right, right about to there is good enough, far enough up. Then I'm going to capture it with the thread to hold it in place. I'm not going to cut it off because I'm going to still use that chenille. I'm just going to leave it there for a second. Then I'm going to come back in with the leg material, same purple sexy floss, and tie just an X pattern in. So I've got two legs on my side, and then do the same on the opposite side. I just capture it in the thread, walk it around the hook, capture it on your side, on the camera side, and then wrap through it with the thread to hold it in place. These you don't have to worry about being perfect right now either because I can manipulate them a little bit with the thread. The main thing at this point is just getting them to be locked in place so that they won't be pulled out. A half hitch or a quick whip finish. Use the bobbin cradle again here. And now we're going to use the chenille to manipulate where these legs go. So I'm going to wrap a couple between this one. I think I'm going to go one more around and behind and this guy in front and then pull the chenille up top. Oops, captured the thread or the leg with my thread. There we go. Get a hold of that chenille, really crank on it to tie it off. And I'm going to get rid of the excess. And the last step here with the thread anyway is to just whip finish behind the bead. I like to just hold those legs and out of the way. Now you might have noticed I just put two legs on each side. That's because I'm lazy and the fish don't care. You could put three if you like, um, but like I said in the last video, if the fish start counting our legs, we're in big trouble. Luckily, they're not that smart. So those aren't perfect legs, but they're spaced out enough for my liking. That's a nice little stone fly. Notice how thin the body is. Even with a lead wire underbody, it's really, really a thin fly. That helps it sink fast and it also looks more realistic. If you look at a stone in the water, they're really not as bulky as most commercially available patterns. So try that stonefly chenille. We have it in lots of colors, but this purple one's deadly. Try it anywhere you find some large dark stones.